I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. And I'm April, sex toy maven, VP of Hot Octopus, and I've dedicated my life to the business of sex. We're two people with a passion for educating and inspiring shame-free conversations about sex and relationships. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to ShamelessSex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Shameless Sex Podcast. And this one, well, so when we started, Chip, years ago, what, five years now? Almost? Yeah, I think, it, yes, 2017. Yes, like the, like June 1st-ish, 2017. And we started, we said it would be, so weekly episodes, and we'd only have a guest one week out of that month. And now it's almost always with guests and rarely just a whole episode with us. Our lives were a bit different back then as well. And I haven't listened to our initial episodes from the very beginning in a long time. They're kind of fun. They are fun. And now we are both audio. I think we're a little, I will speak for myself, but I am so particular about how our sound is. Mm. And I realize how much we interrupted each other too. What? 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 what, 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 What do you mean? And then our audio quality is better now. Yeah. Well, actually, system. As you say that, and I interrupt you, I, when I've listened to those initial episodes, I was preparing for like, oh God, what? oh no, I was actually kind of impressed with what we did in, like, I think, in your kitchen, that, that other house that you lived at years ago at, during that time, and we had committed to doing f- two to three or five episodes and seeing what would happen and just never look back. So, P.S. Yeah. Uh, one thing, shameless and. Ed- ed- admission right here is that one thing I've I've said to you and you're like this is not true April and I was like yes it is let me show you uh, our album cover and I never knew our album cover meaning when you look at us <laughs> on all of the 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 iTunes yeah. all whenever you see shameless sex and our logo with us with no tops on and bottoms and I was like yo Amy when it comes up on my screen at home on my television you can totally see my vulva and you're like no you can't oh wait yeah you can well, most people aren't watching on a on I tv <laughs> because i did not intend to wear those no, everyone's gonna go look on a tv i know <laughs> you know what do it and we i just got so many more i'm not gonna change the album cover ever and amy was you were like maybe we can find someone to photoshop it and i was like you know what whatever it's not that i was trying to put it out there but it's still sometimes when it comes up i was like motherfucker <laughs> Uh, I should have shaved my bush more for that photo no, shoot. No, I love a bush, though. And also, I love those underwear. I still have them. And That was a great photo shoot. You were wearing my underwear, I think, and I was wearing my own underwear. And Interesting. I, t- <laughs> I took the more see-through ones because I was like, this will never show up Actually, on Actually, there's a, um, a wall hanging right now. I can see it, yes, and I'm my, looking at your bush as we speak. <laughs> but I, right, which, I, no bush shame here. I just didn't know my Volvo would be exposed now forever. I'm a, Yeah, actually, I had a dream about my bush last night. I said that to my friend the other day, uh, a mutual friend of ours. I was like, yeah, you know, I just, when I, I was looking at my, my vulva when it came up on <laughs> my TV. Own TV. <laughs> and she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, you can see that. She's like, then she looked. She's like, you're right. I just on a computer? Yes. Oh, well. So it's there. So everyone, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you're welcome. And I'm not shameful about that. I just am continuously surprised. So there's a shameless admission for you. Which goes hand in hand with this topic. Well, and the topic for this podcast is, is a little April's bit. April's vulva. No. April. <laughs> well, and it's about like, you know, uh, the things that we wish we knew when we started having sex in our teens, what we learned in our 20s, our 30s. April's turning 40 soon, and we will dive into this soon. And and that's a piece of it, right? Like in your teenage years, had there been a picture, well, the, the whole interwebs was a little different then, but that happened at that time. Oh my God, you would have lost your shit. Now you're like, well, all right. Here. Well, P.S. I've never sent out nudes really ever, ever? of myself to anyone ever i've sent out headless shots of the body that have not included me naked or shots of my my bits i'm not anti that for me i was always remember i would tell you what if i want to run for president today? <laughs> don't get me in this shot because that my would, ass maybe but nothing that would probably get you elected though right well maybe i mean in no, my no. world you have my vote 2220 <laughs> 
I don't That's know. a long time. I'm going to be cryogenically frozen. And okay. Them. All right. Well, she has my vote, everyone. So this episode, we didn't really tell them, but it is about, yes. right? It's yes. about our journey. Yeah. And the, the many things that we wish we knew and that we've learned along the way and that don't just relate to us personally because they're things that we've learned. There's educational moments, et cetera, from educators and from our own trials and tribulations. From and, our listeners, mm-hmm. too, who have taught us yep. incredibly deep and profound realizations about things that we have said or that have helped them or things that we've had to rethink that we thought that weren't necessarily accurate. And then we're like, whoa, well, let's look into that. That's right. It's also kind of fun to look back and be like, wow, I used to do that shit. (laughs) Or that's how I thought about, that's how I treated my body or that's the kind of sex I used to have or that's the kind of communication I had in relationships. So no judgment for folks who are like, wow, I'm still on the journey because we will always be on our journey. And as April made the comment about, you know, we'll never change that logo of us. I was like, is it catfishing? If we're, you know, 60 and we're still doing this podcast, I think we got to change the logo at that point. And that goes hand in hand the idea that we will always be changing growing learning shifting and you know that's just a part of this whole piece there's no catfish we did our own hair and makeup there no we did <laughs> i did it no we went and got our makeup done. did we yes we really? did yes oh i remember i did my own hair i never got my hair I done did my, oh that. i never had get my hair done oh but the i makeup. did my own hair oh we did yeah. oh yes we did we got free makeup for buying makeup at the department store <laughs> That's a trick, anyone. If you ever have a photo shoot, just go and select a counter and you just buy a few pieces of makeup and they'll do your makeup for free. Yeah, exactly. A life hack. That is a life hack. And that's one of the things we learned in our 30s. And in our teens. Yes, in our teens. Um, So before we go into uh, that whole piece of all the lessons and trials and tribulations and all the beautiful pieces, we just want to comment on the reviews we've been receiving on iTunes specifically. And I think you can can leave reviews on all of the sites and modalities. Except Spotify. I don't believe you can. Yeah. Actually, I haven't looked into that. I don't believe that you can. Yeah. Well, iTunes is what we particularly, that's what we spend our time looking at. And uh, the reviews have been phenomenal. So if you love our podcast please go give us those five stars and so some of the uh, reviews lately have just been because april you're like well if you don't have time just leave an emoji a squirt emoji yeah (laughs) an emoji of a high five yeah or anything thumbs up emoji of a squirrel yeah or which could mean what a chicken like a oh, co- a cock? A cock, exactly. So someone left a review and their actual name, because you can create your own name if you've never done reviews, was a picture of books, an emoji of books, and a splash or squirt. That was their name. So so something like learning squirt. Maybe learning squirt is their name. That's Ooh, in code. Amazing. And then their, their review was a wave. What, what does it mean? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I really think that... I like it. The more folks that can encode their reviews or have us decode their That's emoji fun. reviews could be really fun. Yeah. There was a, a game show back in the 90s that was like that. You had to decode these pictures and I was fucking shitty at it. So if you want to do that, <laughs> I need to use my brain more. So yeah. speak to us in riddled emojis, please. But only with five stars, though. <laughs> yes. Also, five stars are important. And if you don't know how to review, it is a little bit tricky. iTunes specifically, you do have to search. Even if you're subscribing or downloading, you have to search for us. Then you go down, you scroll down, and then you hit review, and then you can just type a little squirt emoji mm. or a sushi emoji or Ooh. an emoji of a chip they don't have that really what about dip guacamole they have some dips all right and some soup someone else also left their phone number and said sext me ladies <laughs> that was wonderful i won't be sexing you neither will april but i appreciate it thank you and that had five stars so that is welcome thank you very much is sexting if you sext someone, is it only words or is it photos as well and emojis? I, I think I think it all kind of goes in the same category. Oh, okay. I mean, a sext is the words that you would say and and I think pictures, like sexy pictures. So, yeah, sexy. Yeah, because uh, so texting wouldn't be sexy, and a photo that's not sexy wouldn't be 
sexy sort of sexy. I never took the course on in sexting, sexting <laughs> and so I need a little bit of a refresher and or the 101. All right, so if you're like, you know, 18 to 25, but not below 18 and not over 25, can you please tell us what sexting is all about these days? Because or just send us a review with five stars that looks like a sext. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Then we'll learn. Okay, which brings us to all the things we've learned along our way since we became sexual beings. And what I would like to highlight first is, well, we've been sexual beings from the start since we came into this world we were created from sex and we are not going to talk about those times we've talked about in so many podcasts actually if you want to talk about when you were masturbating with your bear that's totally cool we we were going to kind of start with when we first started really exploring sexuality with others as well as maybe uh, expanding within ourselves and those happening in our teenage years and then the shifts in our 20s 30s and soon to be 40s because april's turning 40 this year Mm -hmm. she's like yes i'm actually excited about turning 40 and i will say even if you believe you weren't born a sexual human some folks are feeling that maybe there's pressure we've had other guests i believe there was august mclaughlin mclaughlin really way to go your brain she's the girl boner podcast how could you forget she was talking about how her sexual self that was really feeling into having sex and orgasm didn't happen until i believe it was in her 20s yeah and that is not uncommon and for me i was very young and and for you it happened later later as well yeah yeah i mean not way later but yeah it was not young and it's not like you were a late bloomer or something but for me i and we're talking about masturbation by the way yeah like right. self pleasure at young and age. masturbation i really didn't understand that what i was doing when i was 5 or 6 year old and i'll try to remember the exact age but i would hump a pillow and i did that for a long period of time and then i remember accessing vhs tapes of different movies that i wasn't allowed to watch when my mom was at home and i'd pop them in and then look for the spots and and the teddy bear though and the teddy bear was yeah. my go to i tried pillows didn't have the same effect and my <laughs> teddy bear berry was my go to tool for masturbation and I'm bringing this up because my sex did shift in my teens when when I cared about what when you finally the boys lost the bear. thought. And the bear was no longer allowed in my stuffed animal collection because I wanted to be cool and get rid of all my stuffed animals. And so I did not realize in my teens that my masturbation would trickle in or leak into my sexual experiences with boys because I was experiencing most things with boys. I did experience some things with girls and it was, we didn't know it was sexual at the time. It was like, let's try to make out. Or what does your dry humping feel like with my dry humping? It's so interesting when you talk about this because later when we talk about like our 30s and I'll talk more about like sex parties and all this stuff, that your 18 and younger roles and or experiences in the sexuality field are like so dynamic and diverse with masturbation and, and you know different different bodies and sexes and genders and all these things. And now you've shifted a little more like kind of honed in with various things totally. but, I mean you're, you're definitely baiting a bunch and you and you're also someone who isn't um you know you don't identify as super straight like as and I and I do and now I'm in more of like this like well yeah, sex parties and be naked let's do these things and like and it's, it's, yeah I love hearing that though I just love hearing that I remember you telling the story being younger and like trying out some like kind of scissory humpy things with right. uh, other well, girls. Well, I would and- try that with other girls, but only with our clothes on. And it was a very young age. And it was always both of us sort of mimicking what we would watch in our videos of, of the things we weren't supposed to be watching when our parents <laughs> weren't home. And I remember the time when the internet, when I, when my friend had a computer and I Google or not Google that Google wasn't even there. No, it wasn't. I looked up <laughs> like www.april.com and it was a porn site back then. And I was like, Oh my God. And I don't know. I think I may have been 10, but that's when I realized the beauty of the internet. Oh, yeah. And every time I'd go over to her house, I'd be like, what is going on <laughs> in April.com? Oh, because you didn't have the internet at your house. No, uh, I was not that advanced. Did you ever do the AOL chat rooms? No, but people would try to suck me into chat rooms in this April.com thing <laughs> back then. Oh, my God. And oh I didn't understand. They said, hey, do you want to meet me in this room? And 
I did not understand. Did you go? And I never did. Okay. I never did any of the chatting. Oh, I was so into it. And I would pretend like I was a man sometimes in there, but I was like 13 or 12 or something. And I would be there like, <laughs> what are you wearing? To take your top off. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is funny because I'm but super people straight. Didn't send pic- did they send images? No, it, they didn't, that, that was, was not, available. not available. That was, okay. Then it was AOL chat rooms and all the 18 year olds were like, what the fuck are you talking about? It was not available. This is all like on your, you know, your big PC computer and you're there typing Hoping away. Your parents won't walk in. And they can't see. And the minute it gets weird, you just leave and they have no idea. And like, it's just like you disappear. That's but I, fun. and it's funny as someone who's like so just into the, the cock as I am that I really, in, I, I wasn't turned on by playing that role it was like this like exploration almost as if like what was it what is it like to be hit on by a man but i'm pretending like a man and seeing what the woman's experience is like but not a woman because she's 13 and i'm 13 hopefully she's 13 and actually i'm 13 so it's not creepy because that's legal so <laughs> but then i was thinking about all the ways that can happen i mean and then i realized actually at that young age wow anyone i'm talking to could be full of shit i could be talking to because a man or woman yeah and you and and i taught myself that wow. just by doing it by being the creeper this is why i think i <laughs> intentionally never did or it was probably an unintentional slash lack of of actually having access to the internet in my own home but why i never went that route yeah, I had a landline. <laughs> Me too, but well, we had the inter- internet in the house. So you're you're younger than I am, though. This is true, and which brings us to the teenage years. Chip, tell me about. When you first started having sex, I am doing air quotes in this moment, and you don't have to paint the entire, you know, whatever you want, but age and the what you're understanding, the experience, you know, what you knew then, what was sex supposed to be like, and what was your experience of it. We've talked before when we had our moms on the show back a few years ago about our upbringings with sex. And one thing that I always recall about my upbringing growing up in Wisconsin, sex, we never talked about sex in my house. And sex was something that I knew it was in my brain. I knew it was something I wasn't supposed to do and it was bad or taboo. And I was enamored with wanting to figure out how that would work with a penis in my vagina. And I knew also that I didn't want to be a pregnant teen mom or something. I I was really adamant about having to go in life without I never wanted to have a child when I was a teenager. I just knew it. I was like, that would be bad for me because what will I do? So I waited to have sex for a long time because of being fearful. So when I started having any sort of experience with boys after I had the dry humping with girls when I was younger, which wasn't in my brain sexual, I never knew that that was sexual until I... Did you ever orgasm? Oh, yes. Oh, I, it's, it's so funny. Yes, the brain's like, you didn't totally. put that together till later. And yeah. it was fully clothed all the time. And I remember always, I always felt that it was a bad thing, though, that it yeah. was bad. And uh, I'd have guilt afterward after doing that. And and I remember talking to my friends about it, the, the girls that we would, uh, there were only a few that, uh, <laughs> that it happened with and asking them, was that bad? And they would say, no, I think that it's okay. And another one would say, no, but you can't come over anymore. Oh, really? There was one that said that. <gasps> oh. And so I said, okay, no problem. No, you didn't. Um, but you also were inside. We're like, oh, I know, yeah. shared. And so moving into the teens, yeah. I didn't have an understanding of what sex was like other than masturbating often and being turned on when certain things would come on movies or shows that we'd watch that I was allowed to watch. TV was so much more limited. And I remember being okay with having boys touch my breasts. And then I didn't even kiss my first boyfriend that I had until I was 14. Mm. And that was a huge deal for me. And I remember it. And then I remember the touching of the boobs. And then I remember letting a lot of boys finger me and actually i was 14 and i lied to this dude told him i was 18 he was 22 you're only 14 i was 14 oh he knew that you were not 18 come on (laughs) well it was completely set up by my friend that was 18 who wanted to hook up with his friend and she's like well he has a friend he was 22 wow and that's a big i was 14 and i told him that i was 18 and then he he asked me when we were like hanging out are you really 18 and i said no i'm 16 
16, but oh, you did. I'm okay. Like, Say, I was yeah. only 14. But still, but, so he knew you were underage. Though. He like, knew yeah. I was underage yeah. and yeah. I let him finger me. I let him, I'm saying, because I did not know what to do and I did not touch cocks. I did not know what to do with a penis. I had no clue mm-hmm. and I had no education about it. I only knew that a penis going anywhere near my body may get me pregnant. So I was like, <laughs> oh my God, keep it over there. Yes. Yeah. I didn't even, I, I was afraid of ejaculate anywhere mm. near me. And then towards the mid range of my teens, When I was about 16, I was authorizing boys to go down on me. Authorized. Sign here, please. (laughs) Yes, I did. I, I I was more comfortable with it, but I always, again would never let Cox near my body because I, my fear of getting pregnant because I, I don't know why I think it was because my mom got pregnant when she was a teenager and she instilled the fear of how it would destroy my life. And I'm not saying to anyone out there that it will, that's what I was fearful of. Mm. And my mom said, if that happens to you, you're, you could end up on the street and have it. She was like, I'm not going to help you. And so I was like, okay, no problem. I'm not letting a cock anywhere near my body, but I would let, boys go down on me that's and yeah i also never could orgasm from that i Uh, it was almost like a when they go down on you Yes. What about never. the finger banging? Never. No. The finger banging was so basically all the comfortable. Your orgasms were when you were scissoring with the girls when you were younger, basically. Totally. Uh-huh. And I, I was unable, and this is going to also, we're going to talk to you because I've been talking for a long no, time. No, no, I like this. It's fun. I was unable to actually, because of my masturbation practice, not knowing it was even a practice, because of how often I had masturbated from a young age through my teenage years into my 20s, when I started at Pure Pleasure and you gave me my first vibrator, that was like, wow, my hand doesn't have to hurt so bad. <laughs> Holy shit, this is great. You're welcome. And Right. <laughs> and I related, though, orgasm to only being obtainable through touching myself or being with myself and every time I would have sex when I finally did have sex I was only into having the dude orgasm and be be pleasured it never was about me and I was like is it and I would ask myself during is it over yet is it is it going to come yet what else can I do and I I don't even know exactly why that I was conditioned in that way but I always would masturbate the next day after I'd have sex with my boyfriend in, in high school. Like get it and over with and then take care of yourself. Totally. Mm-hmm. And that lasted a long time. And whatever the wires connecting in my brain, the neural pathways that were signaling the sex is just for him, which was a thing. However, that was made really did take a long time to to release and to reprogram. But it did happen eventually. My teens, not so great. I had a lot of a world, though. Yeah, but still not the, the but still, receiving. So, but the, so, so just the receiving though. Were you still doing it to kind of please them though, or were you like, was it totally okay? You're like because they I like wouldn't it. fuck them, yeah. or I wouldn't have sex with them because I was so afraid of pregnancy. Really, so wasn't it wasn't like control. go down and mop. It was more like just here. You can do this because I don't want to get pregnant. And I want to appease you and keep the affection or attention or whatever. Right. Yeah. Which now seems that. That was ages away. I can't even remember myself being that way. And tapping into it is is powerful. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of one of our amazing sponsors, such as Like a Kitten. Guess what, y'all? It's time for spring cleaning. And that includes your sex drawer with those old, crusty lube bottles and toys way past their prime. Why not get a fresh start this spring with a brand new set of sexy essentials from Like a Kitten? Like a Kitten offers subscription gift boxes that have all the ingredients you need to spice up your sex life and think outside the box. Plus, it ships right to your door discreetly so you don't ever have to step foot inside a sex shop. Their spring box will tickle all your senses with everything from sex toys to flavored lube to other sensual accessories. I personally love how this season's box also comes with nipple arousal cream and a nipple suction set because they help me rediscover my love for nipple play. Not only do you get all this and more for only $79, which is a steal since the products in this box retail for twice that price, to celebrate spring, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners 15% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout. Just go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or use code shameless 
to get 15% off these incredible boxes. Likeakitten.com slash shameless. The link is in the episode's description. All right, back to the show. I have exact memories of like the first time I was finger banged and finger the, bang, yeah and, and the, the the first time finger banger I, is someone who later on in life um, some showed up in the business world and I won't share deep details about what that that means but was it consensual? Uh, yes, but the same thing like you know didn't say anything didn't feel good like first time there's fingers touching your your pussy and as someone who never really explored that with my own fingers internally and have someone's kind of just like jabbing away and like you, you know I had never had sex it was like everything's kind of like you know still new and intact and sometimes they'd have longer nails that would hurt I don't even know it was a dark room with you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals but let's do it like they do it animals or doggy style or whatever it was that song like and no you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals let's do it like they do on the discovery, discovery channel. channel yeah oh my god that that wow. i yeah. did not like that so song. that's playing the background but i liked your version of this and then someone's finger that was me. playing in the back well i'm getting finger banged oh and i'm like god. this hurts i don't like this i don't know what to say and it's interesting because i grew up with a different upbringing with a with a little more sex positivity shame sex wasn't a shameful thing i had more comprehensive sex education but it didn't include how to have pleasure, you know, how to have orgasms and still grew up in a culture where somehow it's all kind of the cock or the, the sexuality based around penis owners is the standard. And I still, even with all my background and a mom who told me before I had sex, you can come to me when you want to get on, when you want to have sex, you can go on birth control. Like I could have, and the first time you have sex, it can be here in the house. I want you to be safe. Um, still had that idea, still did the same things, just wasn't people going down to me and, uh, got on birth control before having sex and all these other pieces. But oh, you did, I did. Yeah. I, yeah, I very rarely have, I have been very active in, my sexual health and wellness in a positive way in a way that wasn't shameful because it's it was offered to me from my mom at a young age like a year or two before I was sexually active and when I say that I mean actually having a penis inside of me not fingers and things like that so uh and so I guess in my teens a lot of the sex that I was having was very similar to yours except were you that having were you having like PIV like penis and vagina sex I think or the first time I was maybe 15 or something okay. and um and but no orgasms had never had an orgasm not even from masturbation though um and I wasn't a shameful masturbator when I was younger I just didn't really masturbate were you, were you wondering what orgasm was like did you know about orgasm or yeah I did have questions about it yeah and just, research it in a bit but just knew that you weren't having those happen in your body yet i yeah i don't i don't know how much research i did i was aware of this that i'm having sex or fingers no and also my first three sexual partners that i penetrated sex with did not go down on me they never offered it never asked for it didn't know i could they never offered it so oral sex to this day someone going down on my pussy is still like a tricky thing because did you go down on them oh yeah a lot from blowjobs all over the place just kidding that's not true but i everyone um we can't give details but we are writing a book and there's a lot of uh, more in-depth stuff there that isn't just about our stories but i'm so i won't go too into this in that in in this regard because it is uh in the book and um and both yeah. of us have in and, and we do talk about this but we both have had some traumatic situations yeah. that have happened in our teens yes and the blowjobs that i was offering all over the place was not like hey football team i'm gonna suck all your dicks you know it wasn't like that it was okay here's this guy that's my air quotes again boyfriend or a guy that you know i'm now i'm 17 and you know someone i I know we're all friends part of the same friend group and we we're making out and now all of a sudden they are saying you know i'm gonna go hang out with my bros but if you suck my dick i'll hang around you know shit like that where and 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 sometimes they said that oh yeah that's all in the book chip don't worry anyways i didn't have dudes <laughs> not call me back because i wouldn't suck their cock yeah I, uh, where and they would never they pretended that they wouldn't even know me and and all this is part of what we're shit. speaking to like whether you grew up in santa cruz california in something somewhere that has maybe a little bit more of like a progressive or sex positive culture versus the midwest where you grew up we are still kind of doing some of the same things and as teenagers especially are having some similar experiences you had probably abstinence only sex education i have comprehensive i'm more apt or more open to being on or afraid to have sex and be on birth control yet we're still having orgasmless disconnected sex because that's what teenagers do there's also the piece even if 
and it probably all is inner interlaced and, and woven and in relationship to each other. But even if we had comprehensive sex education, I still feel that there is so much slut shaming that goes on. Oh, yeah. And that was something that also I don't want to be prude and I don't want to be a slut. That was something that was really difficult to navigate in high school. And I still hear young humans out there where they'll talk shit about, oh, my friend just sleeps with everyone. And I'm like, do they want to? Is it consensual? Are they doing this because they feel like they have to? Or that's the stuff, too, that sex education is so important. And maybe it is all related in some way where we can focus not on what will happen, but on our own pleasure, which is something that I believe if we start to put the focus on our own pleasure, no matter what genitals you're rocking and no matter how you identify as a human, what gender you're identifying as, what you were born with. And if that's happening and you feel like, oh, I'm feeling like this person's a slut or this person is a specific way. I feel like that's the shift that needs to happen. And maybe sex education would help with that. It would be really nice. And that's the shift I feel like <laughs> happens, not for everyone, but for a lot of folks as they grow older, they get out of this like teenage competitive, but not all of them. Cause I have met plenty of, you know, 40 year olds that have some strong judgment around how men and women and humans should just be, um, in, re in regards to sexuality and is slut shaming a part of that? Yeah. That actually, yeah, I actually, you and I have a mutual friend who was slut shamed at around 40 by a partner for having so many experiences with past partners, uh, having sex. And that still showed up there because of the gender dynamics and all these different pieces. So yeah, but that does shift over time. So let's move, let's move to the twenties. All right. In the 20s. So now we're in our 20s, Chips. You're 25. Oh, you know me now. In 25, right? 25. Yeah. Well, I decided to... We're finally in each other's When lives. I was actually 20, I chose to no longer be with penis owners. I made a, a conscious decision because I was... Fuck that dear. Fucking mad. <laughs> and my heart had been broken and I thought that all of all of them were bad right i was 20 uh so i chose so you were 25 when i was 20 i chose to have a relationship with just and it, i did not identify it, it as being a lesbian i didn't identify it as anything i identified it as wanting to feel pleasure and love and it was closeted and very very difficult to navigate because her and i were best friends that turned into lovers and in secret i realize this sounds confusing because you just said you were 21 and i was 25 and no i was saying you're you're, you're 25 and you're just telling your story oh yeah so no no april's just telling her story i didn't i wasn't a part of this i'm not the one person oh, she's talking thought, about well, and i'm not the 25 year old just oh, having sex on with. it i was like well, you're 25 <laughs> no yes that would be confusing no, and i didn't also at 25 decide that i'm done with men and now a lesbian <laughs> so. good point okay Thank you for but i like this because i love when people are like so are you guys together well so. because i didn't want to jump to 25 Okay. Because this part of my 20s was, it was very shaping of who I am today. And I thought that perhaps I I was only meant to be with vulva owners. And now I understand way more about sexuality where I know it doesn't have to be labeled and so specific. But back then I did think it is this way or that way. And there's nothing else in between because I didn't know anything else. Again, the sex education piece. The internet does exist now and there's more resources. We have Google now. And back then I was like, I am lesbian. And I never would say that to anyone, but that's what I was telling myself inside. And I, n I never thought anything was wrong with that. And in my experience with this person, it was awesome. And it was, I actually remember being like, wow, maybe a vulva owner knows another vulva owner enough for they can fucking get down and actually do things. And I remember being able to have an orgasm or a few and learning about how to actually please another pussy, which I had never done before. Not genital on genital. It had only been dry humping in fourth grade. So <laughs> totally different. And that was really a turning point for me in my sexuality. And I reached a point where the closeting of the entire situation and not because there was shame around it. It was because neither of us were uh, willing to open up to our families and n neither of us knew if this is what we wanted to really go forth with and present the world because we just loved each other so much that we felt like uh, experiencing each and other's like bodies 20, was part of it. you're young 20s I was too 20 in the and then 21 and yeah. then 
uh, it was for a little while. And then what I do recall, though, there was a point in the relationship where I remember wanting and I never knew about sex toys again had no idea about strap-ons or or uh, other penetrative devices other than what was attached to your body which fingers and mouths and things and I remember missing the penis I remember the moment in like penetration I, I remember just missing a cock like yeah. I the the soft to hard mm -hmm. pieces that were involved in in penises and also the dynamic of like the mystery of what I'm going to use the terms that I used back then, like the mystery of the boy or the man, right? Of mm -hmm. what they were doing, the dudes and what they were thinking and, and sort of the difficulty involved in, in you missed the challenge, the challenge. <laughs> yes, which is kind of my fucked up mind. So that was that. And then I, and then I actually ended up dating my, uh, best friend penis owner after that, uh, after her and I called it quits. I ended up being with one of these dudes that I lived with and being with one of the dudes I lived with like five dudes and one of them they were in a band and what was the sex like you don't have to talk about that relationship just uh, we, let's not talk about relationship let's talk no, about like right. so your mid-20s you talked about that but like your your understanding of what sex is now that you've had now you've had the orgasms with this woman and now you're in this relationship here and like maybe don't say what the sex was like there but like what was your idea of sex now at this point your understanding well it was the same fucking process that I had done before mm. waiting for it to be over wanting to help him orgasm not expecting an orgasm to come out of our situations trying different positions and being more confident in myself and we were in our 20s drinking a shit ton of alcohol it was in college like I do think that was in a factor in some of the sex that I had with him and uh we loved each other but it was the sex was never what I know now uh I'm capable of having so in a nutshell that was it and he was a best friend and I still love him he's amazing so, so thank you for those good days we had some good we had some times. good times. We had some good times. Well, and that's not a blame. It's not like, oh, yeah, he was real bad in bed. It was like, this is what we knew, you know, and, the, and I continued on. You're saying that it was a continuation of some of the old stuff that it had evolved to. It wasn't the same old stuff. And there was some evolution there and some shifting and changing. And and I would say similar experiences on my side, too, of a, a evolving and shifting and still stuck in a process about the penis owner's sexuality kind of coming first or the caretaking mentality, uh, finally had an orgasm from a vibrator and continued feeling really good about that, having orgasms from vibrators. And actually at, at the same time, decided I would go into this field at 18. So um, I had that going on too. Like I was learning about sex positivity, sexuality and going down this path. But the reason why I did that also was because I didn't understand my body. It, I could only access orgasm from sex toys. Um, and you were in a long term relationship my first love was a uh, four 18, years 18 yeah. years old uh-huh that's when i met you when well, not 18 but i met you three years into it right so i, was, I think i was about about 21 with the fake id but and then, how was the sex in that when you had incorporated vibrators into then, your relationship yeah so i would have orgasms just with the vibrator there and and it was very supportive like the my, you know my partner was very supportive of that of using sex toys and i don't think my partner ever said like why does it always have to be with the sex toy there's something wrong with you um i don't remember where the idea came from but I at some point had I think it came from some sort of outside sources where I somehow shamed, my, shamed myself away from, from that a little bit like there's something wrong with me if this is the only way I can orgasm well the only way then actually it wasn't the easiest way it's just the only way I had, I had ever had an orgasm in my 20s I was more empowered more informed and was having more connected sexual experiences and that meant pleasurable and um, did i have conformist sex on the occasion like you're saying like waiting for it to get over yep definitely a, a lot and and not and that's not blaming anyone at all that's like my just my own programming the messages or lessons that i wish i had implanted in my teens if not then at least in my 20s you know was about more understanding of going into my own body and taking the time to really navigate that space and understand that space and separate that from someone else's sexuality, especially a penis owner, so that I could really tap into like this being. But I was a really heady person too. And so there's all, all these ways. So like to sum it up in my 20s, 
I had good sex. I had really loving sex. I didn't have great, loving, deeply connected, deeply orgasmic sex all in one package in my 20s, maybe in my later 20s or early 30s. But I started to like learn about that. So it was a journey. It was like I got a little taste of it. And but it was getting better. You know, it wasn't like my teens, but it was definitely getting better. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our amazing sponsors like UberLube. UberLube is a luxurious silicone lubricant that can enhance your sex and intimacy. UberLube's unique formula is velvety, long-lasting, with no flavor or scent, and it feels absolutely incredible on the body. There are thousands of doctors recommending UberLube to their patients because it's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. So whether you want to make your hot sex even hotter or you want to prevent dryness, take our advice and check out our favorite go-to, UberLube. UberLube isn't just for sex. I use it for massage, to tame my frizzy hair, to prevent chafing, even for oral sex sessions. I love how it comes in a beautiful bottle with a pump top for easy access, appearing more like a cosmetic product so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. UberLube is without a doubt my favorite lube and countless listeners agree, often stating, we never knew lube could be this good. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS combines scientific research of real vulva owners so you can learn shame-free techniques on how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied 20,000 plus people of all ages and turned the research into animated modules, short videos, and beautiful infographics that are tasteful and easy to understand. Whether you want to learn about external pleasure, internal stimulation, or techniques with toys, OMGS can help you master vulva pleasure. Let me tell you, I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives because knowledge really can activate your pleasure power. OMGS is for anyone who cares about vulva pleasure and wants to take it to the next level. OMGS can help you become a sexual strategist by equipping you with the tools you need to unlock your pleasure potential. Plus, your OMGS purchase helps fund more pleasure research. OMG, that's great. Only pay once and these techniques are yours forever. That's right. This is not a subscription service and you don't need to download a thing. So go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off when you purchase any OMGS season. Again, go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Time to pursue your pleasure. And now back to the show. Do you think if you could take who you are now and implant what you know now from all of your experiences into that 20 year old self that your sex would have been... I don't want to say better, but it would be more opening and that you could have had more orgasmic experiences and, and more or connection with the partner that you were having. Yeah. Well, with that, we'll just move into the 30s then because I'm now 37. And um, if I were to know uh, the things I know now about sexuality and relationships, communication, empowerment, all the pieces and if I were to think about taking this and bringing it into those relationships in my 20s, I probably wouldn't have been with those people then. Mm. Um, I probably, because then I still didn't really know who I was. I was still learning who I was as a sexual being. And I think this is another part of the piece. You know, a lot of people get in relationships and they're in their early 20s and they have these long-term relationships and some of them are beautiful and they, you know, they grow old together. And a lot of them don't. And divorce is, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, 50, 50 ish, right? Like there's a, there's a high probability, um, that that might happen. And the, so there's this piece that is grateful that I've taken my time to really learn this. And now I can be in relationships where it's more aligned and fitting to who I am as a sexual being now. And I took all this time and these experiences in dating or being in relationships where I could figure all this out, but I took this very different path than most people. So yeah, I, that gets a really complicated way of answering that question. And I'm still not perfect, by the way, I'm still learning, but I just feel that the sex that I have now, whether I'm in, you know, we're in a relationship or say I were, you know, single in five years, I would be choosing folks and experiences that really aligned with me but I had to do a lot 
to get there. Like everything added up to this. The reason I asked that question is because the one thing I believe that all of the resources now that are available, not only through podcasting, but through there's more books available now and there's a little bit more normalization about honoring your own pleasure and your own needs. And I believe that folks that were in their 20s and their teens that are having sex now hopefully can access, at least they can have access to the tools that can help them navigate in maybe a different relationship or a different path that will help them have the sex that they desire. At a younger age than we got to do, you mean? Right, or whatever age they're ready. And I think that we do have some listeners that are in their early 20s. We've, we've, oh, yeah, we we've spoken do. to them, and, yeah. and I love I love that. When I, but they also have the porn thing, though, which yes. we, I mean, it's not that we couldn't go look porn, up Big Dick. Yeah, but, on a VHS. but it was harder to access, right? Now they're, everyone's walking around with the phone, and this is the, this is the part. I mean, porn still is all about a cop and the cock's pleasure unless you're looking up some really good high quality queer porn which is you know most folks are not finding or producing actually it is available it is out there but it's not what you're going to see on like youporn.com and uh, most of it is very much geared towards the you know penis owner's pleasure and so yes i hear what you're saying like yeah they can go google like hey how to have a fantastic orgasm as a penis owner as a vulva owner or whatever and they're gonna see a whole bunch of fucking bullshit pop up that's going to show them this one idea of the way sexuality should be i was talking about resources though there's more workshops or youtube videos things that are you have to remember what you're watching and and the credentials of the folks and and not getting your education from you porn not at all that is not going to help you have a better sex i'm just thinking if me in my brain if no matter who the folks out there that i was with previously to and i'm still learning every fucking day about my sexuality and and who i am and i never claim to be an expert in any specific well sex toys i have expertise in that field for sure i'm just speaking to the resources now our podcast that brings in all sorts of different ideas from people that know their shit that you can search through I want to learn about anal or I want to learn about how to squirt or I want to learn about how to communicate or unconsciously couple with someone that I still care about. These are the things that I believe would have helped me navigate my relationships better. And I stayed in relationships longer and I didn't have the sex that I desired in a lot of those relationships because not only I, I, did, I didn't know myself or love myself as much as I, I do at this point in my life, but also I didn't really realize that those types of available at all other than porn yeah and Kama Sutra books yeah totally yeah and that, that is a blessing that we are in a time where that is available and uh, we you have to be 18 to listen to our podcast if you're under 18 uh sorry we're not talking to you but uh that it's kind of available globally and it's uh, as far as I know it's only in English but something like this is available for anyone to listen to whereas when, when we were in our teens and 20s there were podcasts I guess that's starting in our mid mid 20s ish so yeah I hear what you're saying and but people have to discover it but yeah I'm, I'm grateful that it is available and would have been really helpful when I was younger to have that. I mean, I wish I had it when I was 14. I was listening to something, but right before or during the time when I was starting to engage with sex with other humans, uh, that I understood that my sexuality, that my desire, that my pleasure was equally, if not sometimes needing to be more prioritized than the other person that I was playing with based on the emotional connection or what's going on with my body or them or whatever, you know, that we were working together and respecting each other and creating pleasure that was, yeah, just not one-sided or super heady or, you know, all of these different things that I felt like I had lived a lot of, had a lot of experiences in. Yeah. I love how much we've evolved over the course of when we first met to now and the reason that we're recording this podcast right now is also to shout out to all of our listeners out there no matter what age you are whether you're in your late teens uh, over 18 (laughs) uh, in your 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s that we can help speak to you and help you reach the desired outcomes that you're looking for and it really does start with yourself and that's something that took me a long time to figure out and so long that it's almost shameful to admit because I was in my 30s Mm -hmm. and I was in my mid 30s 
And so that was not that long ago where I realized that I was in charge of my own fucking pleasure. And I'd hear people say that you're in charge of your own happiness or you are in charge of your own pleasure. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> this dude is supposed to make me wet. Right? <laughs> totally. An asshole comment. And so I'm not an asshole. Com- no, 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 I didn't think that. I'm thinking yeah. that oh, is an asshole comment funny. because yeah. now I know that when it comes down to it, granted, there are other elements. There's chemistry. There's techniques. There's all sorts of different energies involved. And we have the informative highway of your phones and laptops available to us at all times that can spike your dopamine and let you come without having any interaction with anyone. Or you have screaming fucking children or a stressful workday or a pandemic or we can go on and on. However, I now still work almost every day on realizing that I'm in charge of my own pleasure and I can mind fuck myself or I can fuck yourself just fuck myself. <laughs> yeah. and so I'm choosing that so that's what my 30s was about go for fucking yourself and this podcast <laughs> we co-host this podcast together we founded this podcast together and I will say this podcast has helped not only change my life mm. Because of all of the incredible people that not only listen to us, but the incredible people that have been on the show. And one of the turning points of uh, the podcast, and it was a later episode, but it was episode 95. And I had listened to Emily, Emily Nagowski's book before, but it was called Come As You Are Because You Are Normal. Mm-hmm. And I am such a scientist in my own right and I love when people bring science and no woo Mm -hmm. and she's so fucking smart and genius about how to really navigate the vulva owning body and I learned about myself though and what that would look like and I've listened to that book because I didn't read it I listened to it I'm sorry I'm lazy sometimes it's called Come As You Are by Emily Nagowski and yes I listened to it as well yes. yeah that's, it was, I read yeah. it but I listened it's funny whatever we say read we know half the time people are like you listened in chat <laughs> but that was a turning yeah. point I was like oh my god I'm so hard on myself and okay And I just wanted to speak to that because my 30s have, this is when Shameless Sex five years ago has come about, and my 30s have really been, for me, revolutionary within my sexuality. And even though I've been a sexual person masturbating at a young age, I never understood the capacity of what was possible within partnership, within different experiences, within myself until I've been learning with you and with all the folks that we've had on the show. So I just want to speak to that because I, I think it's important. Yeah, for me too. Know. That Yeah, that podcast and her book that I read, air quotes again, because I listened to it as well, that really stood out for me and, it, and for a lot of folks. If you have not checked out Come As You Are by Emily Nagowski or episode number 95, I highly recommend it. Um, and sing Nirvana. Come as you are, <laughs> as you were, as I want you to be. This just looks kidding. really awesome with the mic in front of you as you're doing that. Oh my gosh. To do it. This is a shimmy filming. Just embrace Kip Kurt Cobain. Thank you. Yes. Rest in power, Kurt. So I recommend this uh, for anyone who has a vulva or is an admirer of vulvas. Go check out episode number 95. Uh, you were also saying that episode 83 had an impact on your life, which was when we did. That was the first in, in-person episode with Dr. Allison Ash, right? I did say that. And I don't want this to be all about me because we haven't talked about you as much in your 30s. I will just touch on the Allison Ash. Al- Al- I keep saying Allison. Dr. Allison. Dr. Allison. <laughs> Allison, when we, we actually were in person with her in Oakland at the time, and one of a few now in person episodes, I and I had never met her before. You knew her. I didn't go in expecting anything. And the tools that were represented, it was about how to be an intuitive lover. Like in which, your body. Right. Yeah. Which my eye roll was like, oh my <sighs> God, it's going to be so fucking woo. I'm going to go in. <laughs> drink some tea and try to have an orgasm no no, you added that part to it no No, people are like is that what recording's like (laughs) because it sounds really cool it's not i just get funny (laughs) i I, I try to be funny well that episode because through the years you know amy i was married and i would talk to you in depthly about how difficult it was to express my sexual desires and my intimacy was very low level during that period, even though I was, I was successful in my career. I had all of these things going for me. I was traveled. I could not fucking speak to my husband at the time about what I wanted in the bedroom. And I didn't really know. And she just gave some incredible tools that I've implemented 
afterward that had nothing to do with actually talking. And sometimes, yes, I love talking, but communicating can be difficult. You can well, especially about like the heart and the things that you we can talk about all the hurt that happened in the past. But right now, April, I'm really hurt in this moment with you is a little bit different than like, remember that last time when we were teenagers and you were an asshole? Ha, very different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she talked about these these tapping techniques that you can work out before where you can use if you're in an, an experience, a sexual experience with a partner and a new partner, existing partner, m- multiple partners, and you can work that out. And I loved, I thought that was so genius and I wanted to give her a shout out because when, we, when you and I were talking about what shows of what what impact that always comes back to me because I was such a shitty communicator mm. in the bedroom about what I liked and what I didn't like. And sometimes yeah. you don't want to say no. And I'm not saying that sometimes I don't want to say no to something when it doesn't feel as good as I want it to, or it doesn't feel quite what I'm into at, at the time. And I think because I was conditioned to please and be the nice girl all the time, I never learned how to say that doesn't feel good. I'll be like, oh, it's fine. Or can we press pause or right. stop for a moment? Or I'm not getting a yes, but I'm not getting a hard no. Or I am getting a no, but like, let's sit with this or all those pieces. Yeah. That's hard. And that's, that's the hardest piece. And yeah. So we're wrapping up this podcast shortly. And so what I want to add to that piece there that you just shared is the you know therapy and the deep work. Because I, too, have learned a lot through the podcast, but also my own deep work in working on you know a five and a half year relationship that was uh, I'm no I have not been in for years and was quite a roller coaster with a lot of really magical things that helped me transform into the human I am today where I learned a lot of skills like really p- powerful important skills about deep c- communication of the self and deep inquiry of the self the good the bad the hard the shiny the light the dark all the things but had you know learned it maybe not the most gentlest of ways and uh that both well, that could be in the book too so uh huh and uh, so, yeah, that's another thing that happened more so in my early 30s was that transformation of, wow, I don't know everything. I don't have it all figured out. I don't have this all together. I think that I know what I want or like or how to speak to it. Actually, I actually don't. Or there's other ways to do it that are easier or more gentle or more impactful or more direct or more empowered. And I've spent a lot of time and money and energy learning about these things and I'm so grateful for them because they have changed my life. And now I have the ability to speak to these things that, oh my gosh, this compared to when I was, you know, 16 years old, the conversations I'm having about sex right now to, you know, in the middle of sex to just like say, like, put your hand on my breast and now pinch my nipple, pinch my nipple harder and harder. And actually like feel empowered enough when it's not hard enough to move their hand and start pinching my own nipple hard because that's what I want. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and also a lot of the other commu- communication skills I learned were outside of sex. We are about, you know, what we were talking about earlier, the, you know, the challenges is being in relationship and um, or you and I even practice that together outside of romantic relationships. So, yeah. And I just also wanted to comment on Susan Bretton, uh, who is a fucking machine. Fucking boss. <laughs> Episode 262, The Art of Penetration, a.k.a. fucking. And she talks about all these things that from a, you know, a very empowered perspective. And I love her. The eight shallow pumps with two deep thrusts. Just go listen to it and you'll know what I'm talking about. And just her, her oh, the way she owns being a powerful businesswoman who like, knows her shit, who knows how to ask for what she wants and like run the bedroom room but also is about like pleasing in a way but that doesn't lose herself uh, has been inspirational and yeah she is just, every incredible. time she is on the show yeah. or we've done other projects with her she continues to inspire me mm-hmm. and i am always in love with the information that she provides and it's in such a Away, and it it's not only for folks. She speaks to folks that are usually because she talks about sex after yeah. a specific age when you're getting older and sex changes. And she also, I think, speaks to people that are not considered to be older folks. Like I, I relate to what she says, and and older is subjective. She speaks to all boring. ages. In that episode in particular, episode two sixty two, also because a lot of what we're sharing is like for us. But I've talked to penis owners where that was like. Wow, I learned some shit from that episode. You know, that was really helpful. And they're like, you know, in their 40s and it changed their life and their their sex game. So just there's so much available now. And I think the moral of my story, I'll say, the, and which isn't the moral, it's not the end because it continues on, is that it's going to continue on. And the more experiences I have, 
have and the more knowledge I gain from sometimes not always the best experiences, but also from a lot of learning, the more I shift. And um, that's going to continue on as April Gunther is her fourth. Well, I want to share a piece because I'm 39 and I want to share the last piece. I've spoken a lot on this show about my journey and my more conservative upbringing. And I have put myself in a box throughout my life because of fear or because I didn't want to be labeled or because I thought I was a certain way. And I never came from a judgmental perspective because I'm a very open person and I love people, especially if they're not hurting other people. That's why I hired you at Peer Pleasure. I was yeah. like, you're like, I've never even owned or used a vibrator. It's like, you're a social savant. You work well with people. You're hired. You're like, all right. I know she did. And I told her she was bananas but it's true though this is very true yeah. about you amy yeah. has believed in me from the beginning but this isn't about me yes it is this <laughs> thank you for making about me i hate making shit about me oh but i yeah because no, but thank you and yeah. i love you and you're i always call you my spirit animal my no, you're like you're my <laughs> sexual messiah oh <laughs> in my life uh, mm, so true. bringing it back though again with shameless sex I have been able to tap into things and I'm and I'm speaking to anyone out there that perhaps is thinking about their comfort zone and getting a maybe to things that you aren't a hard no to. And for me, when in my 20s thinking about me, for instance, looking at one of our podcast guests in person that were doing a live demonstration on um, how to deliver uh, the uh, Erwan and Alicia. Oh, it was extended orgasm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I was we were in a their, few feet yeah. a front, in, in their front bedroom. of them in yeah. their bedroom yeah. and was holding so much space to learn and also was thinking to myself, my 20 year old, he April, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> wow, you're looking at a pussy right now and she's having an orgasm. Like in my brain, <laughs> my Midwest accent came out and I was like, holy shit, this is fucking cool. Like I am, I am evolving and I'm also opening up to in a completely new experience that wasn't having to do with me, mm -hmm. but that I learned from, that I enjoyed actually being educated and could take that information to help other folks. And then uh, rewind some to when you and I both separately had sessions with Dolly oh, and yeah. we recorded an episode with her previous to that, I believe. I it's called, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you have I it. I have yeah. it. It's called... Um, Awakening the Pussy. Thank you, because I lost it. And I never thought she mapped our, our vulvas mm -hmm. for us. And number one, I thought vulva mapping was what the gynos did when they stuck the the uh, speculum in you no legit i'm like that's the only time it's either sex or I'm getting investigated. <laughs> but that was where my brain went and yeah. so i was highly uncomfortable and you didn't talk me into it you said look of course sir i was you, like you're gonna do this you're gonna like I it i want some corn and then i was like what <laughs> like i know you might not you might be a no but just listen and i and i listened and i met her and i was safe and i why I'm bringing this up is because I feel compelled to tell everyone out there that I put myself in these boxes and I I never thought I would have anal sex. Not because I thought it was wrong, but I thought it wasn't for me because I had I coerced her as pain. well. Pain. <laughs> or I thought it was was not for me because I just didn't think it would be I thought it'd be dirty. It might there be poop or something. And now I've had probably some of the most incredible and I am not saying that to be superlative in a way that other orgasms aren't that great but I've had fucking amazing orgasms from anal sex or having my anus uh, stimulated while I'm being penetrated vaginally so all of those things I just want to invite everyone out there if you get a maybe to anything your partner gets a maybe to something or they ask you something and you're like I'm not a hard no I'm a maybe I say Rip off the Band-Aid and just dip your foot in and see what happens. As long as you feel safe. And that was always a thing for me. I had to feel safe going into all of these things. And that's why I brought Amy to most of them. Because I was like, this bitch is going to cut someone if they hurt me. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Well, probably not. I'd be like, can we just let's let's talk I about know. this. You let's would. all sit down and talk about this. Come on, everyone. If we can, like, get the fuck out right now. And uh, yeah, that's funny that a lot of your your uh, experiences there. I've been there. Well, when you were doing the vulva mapping, we were, we were in different sessions, but it was like one after the other. And um, in that, like, we've been a part of this journey together, yet separate, and we we're both in the same room. Well, that episode two five two fifty eight with Erwan and Alicia, and before the episode, that's when you're talking about that watching the demo, and you're there like old Midwest voice, and and you're like, oh my god, but I'm looking at this pussy being gently stimulated, and this woman's having orgasms in front of me, and this is awesome, and I'm in my head like, wow, I, this is actually kind of uncomfortable be, <laughs> for me because I've been around so much live sex, which is not uncomfortable for me. I go to sex parties now, I watch so many demos, but I have a thing about the um, inner. Oh, actually, I want to say the the um, yeah inner labia actually not labia majora minora because a listener actually corrected right. us on this. So the inner labia, um, I have some specific sensitivity where it actually kind of like makes my skin crawl to watch oh. the um, like the tissue of the inner labia being stimulated. And it, it, it reminds your body of the which I actually that. recently reached out to Dolly to oh. do a session to try to heal. But I, I I digress. That's not what I'm talking about. It's just so funny that like how the ways that you and I have kind of flipped from when we were younger and then and or or been side by side but separate and the shared experiences that are also very different and um and just for listeners out there who you might be 40 and still having a lot of conformance sex you might be 50 60 you might be 18 and you're having the most liberated sex if you know you there there's just it's an endless journey it's infinite and and we are all so so different in the possibilities i think especially if we have access such as this and um you know and we're not just in survival mode are are endless you know should we choose that so and it is to be completely clear it is work to maintain the practices that you want to have in your life meaning if you really want to experience some sort of uh, cervical orgasm or you want to experience multiple orgasms all of the i mean we've had how many 200 and 80 episodes now. well probably somewhere like 265 or something like that but the thing is is that we have bonus episodes so yeah 280 sounds right it's it's yeah. we have a, a lot of episodes Close to 300 and, and the thing is the information is there you just have to apply it, which is what I have to remind myself of when I fall out of a practice or I forget something. I can refer back to not only the episodes, but also the the literature that are made by the folks that have been on the show or maintaining the practice. And that is something that I have to do every day. Mm -hmm. And if you don't use it, you lose it. Like you said in 40-year-old forty year old version. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Except that I don't always use it, but I don't lose it. It just takes a long time to get back. So. Oh, <laughs> it just completely. sometimes just takes a lot more time and work. I'm like, fuck, if I would have used it more, meaning like self-pleasure to stay connected to my body, now it wouldn't take weeks to get back in. But fuck, okay, I guess I have to do the work. So, And then I want to give one shout out also for folks who are like, you, just, you talked about teenage years through almost 40 and what about folks who are over 40 um and one episode i really want to highlight is uh the episode that we did with joan price uh, episode 127 how to have hot sex at any age uh, she specializes in sex 50 60 70 80 um and up and so it's a really wonderful resource and, and we're not intending to leave folks out we're just speaking more to where we've had what we've learned along the way where we've maybe slipped up and well here's our hopes, dreams, and visions. She also touched on after you lose a long-term partner or a partner grieving. And, yeah. and grieving and, and yeah. sex, mm -hmm. which is a subject that is is heavy and folks out there have experienced this or may in the future. And I was so thankful for her to, to have shared that information with us because she's incredible. She used to be an, a teacher, like an English teacher, I believe. Yeah. And I love Joan. She's great. Uh, we we've had some incredible guests on this show, and yes, I will be forty this year, July sixteenth, twenty twenty two. You will see me turning forty. So when you listen in five years, we'll do this again. We'll be like, what would we learn in the last five years? Um, I'm excited see. about being forty. I'm excited for you too. I'm yeah. excited to be there for your birthday. Yeah, we're leaving the country. I actually we won't like tell you where when we're people going. are. They ask me my age. I never do the how old do you think I am. I'm always like I'm forty. What about you? Yeah, I and never say how old do you think yet. I am. People either. do that. I hear them do that all the time. I never do that. And when they do that to me, I usually typically say a ridiculous number 
like 99 or something 75 yeah even yeah if they look 20 yeah <laughs> and if they look 20 or they look 99 then i say 14 yeah yeah i think yeah it's, it won't go down that rabbit hole a lot of people have interesting things about age and i'm excited to celebrate your 40th birthday alongside a whole bunch of other vulva owning individuals off in some magical place and uh we love penises too but you're not invited to the birthday sorry but uh <laughs> not even our dogs nope Sorry. Uh, no. no diaka allowed. Ah. <laughs> oh, this was so fun. I hope you all enjoyed actually just tuning in with Amy and I because we love you. We actually fully love you. We talk about it all the time. You listening right now, you driving, you vacuuming, you masturbating, you building a fire, you walking in the yard. We love you and you and you and you, no matter where you are, no matter what hemisphere or locale, latitude or longitude you may have. We love you. And if you will, do us a little flava and write us a review in iTunes, because as Amy said in the beginning, we actually read every single one. Sometimes she messages me and tells me, Chip, oh my God. I only message her when, you, when you're supposed to read it because of the yes. high, yeah. The just, bad yeah. one. So I do actually, I will cry. Yeah. And I get really upset. I don't message her those ones. Even if they're not <laughs> about me, if they're about something that is not. And, and our, they haven't happened for months. They haven't. So that's so good sign. Uh, and not that I c- consistently need just positive accolades. However, we put ourselves out there and it is to help you. We're not in this for fucking money, bros. We're not in this for anything other than to help change the world and help them have better pleasure within themselves and with each other. But we'll also make a little money along the way, too. Well, we have to because yeah. otherwise we can't. <laughs> otherwise we, we can get burned out. Nice, yeah. And we'll be like, I'm we out. Have nice sound. Yeah. And, in a studio. So that's beside the point. But yes, thanks for calling me out on yeah, that. Yeah, I know. We have to just say that piece. It's not where, we, where it came from or where, like, our main intention. It would be, if it was just for money, it would be a whole different twist. But yeah, that, I think that's an important piece. Like, it really is what this does for the world, in, including ourselves. And we're not, like April said, the messiahs or, you know, the saviors and any, any of that sort. But it feeds our souls. And so we'll do five star reviews. Oh, please. Thank you. Okay, y'all. We have to say goodbye to you until we we'll see you next Tuesday right we'll see you next Tuesday and sometimes on Fridays when we release a bonus episode but I didn't do that well so you can call me out but still give us five stars (laughs) we'll see you next Tuesday y'all ciao for now want to learn more go to shamelesssex.com and for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com.